So let's talk about reliable sources. I know that it's a difficult topic because it's one of those, well, it kind of depends and it's hard to explain. A reliable source is how we build Wikipedia articles. Reliable sources are those that have journalistic integrity. That means if they get something wrong, are they likely to correct it when it's pointed out that it is wrong? Like, will they, you know, maybe not on the front page, maybe they'll put it on page 10 or something, but they will issue a correction. That's journalistic integrity. Um, another way of knowing you're dealing with something that has um, a reliable source is that they fact check to some extent. Now, I've been interviewed multiple times by different um, places like Wired Magazine. I've been interviewed by New York Times at least twice and um, different places. Um, one in France, I can't remember the name of the magazine. Um, well, many places. And what they do is you usually have an interview with the reporter who asks you a series of questions. And it's probably, you know, 30 minutes of questions and it'll be two sentences in the article. So there's a lot of content coming out there. And what they do is they write their article. And then usually in like in the New York Times case, they come back to you and they say they won't show you the article. But they will say, did you say this? Did you say that? And they'll go through the facts and make sure, you know, how old you are. Is that what you say? Okay. Um, it says you've lived at this location for this many years. Is that true? It, did you say this? Did you say that? So they, they do their best to try to get that somewhat right. If it's some remarkable thing that you were claiming, I mean, they're not going to go and look at your birth certificates or anything like that or look at your diplomas. Um, they're counting on you not lying. So that's another sign of somebody having journalistic integrity that's a reliable source. Usually anything that has a editor where it's not self-published, you're not publishing to a blog or website, but something that's got editorial control, somebody looks it over, make sure it isn't slanderous, make sure it is as you know, as accurate as it appears to be and, you know, corrects your grammar and your spelling and, and that kind of thing. And some of them are like, if you're writing for a place, they would say, I want to do an article on this. And they would say, uh, yeah, that's a good idea. I, I'd like to see that article, but I'd like it to be like this, you know, that kind of thing. That is probably something that has journalistic integrity. All the big places like all the big newspapers would be considered probably having journalistic integrity and reliable source and you know new york times washington post la times cleveland press all those those would all be considered reliable sources um there are there have been some problems in the past where something was suspect and maybe if you remember there was a article by Rolling Stone, uh, Rolling Stones, a woman had wrote an expose on a another woman who had had this really bad encounter. Let's just say that. And she wrote it as if she was interviewing this person. OK, the reporter says, I'm interviewing this person. And she told me all these awful things. And it got up into Rolling Stones and it was published. And not long after, they found out that it was made up, that the woman she said she was interviewing was not a woman she was interviewing. So it was a huge scandal. And for a while, people were wary of using Rolling Stone magazine as a reliable source because it had that kind of um, stigma where they had been caught. Um, and, uh, the reporter had lied is basically what happened. And... Uh, Rolling Stone didn't catch it. So for a period of time, Rolling Stone was kind of suspect because, you know, this kind of thing. Um, there's some we can't use, like the Daily Mail. We cannot use the Daily Mail. Absolutely not. We can't use the citation for the Daily Mail because they do not have journalistic integrity. You can't use 
something like the National Enquirer. It, it, no, it's not going to work. You need reputable um, journalistic kinds of uh, reliable sources. We're looking for secondary sources, which I probably should do a video on secondary versus primary sources. So look for that as well. I'm going to show you one example of a reliable source and what it means or doesn't mean. Now, this just happened today, which is really interesting. This is April 12th, 2024. I thought this would be a good example to show you. Okay, what you're looking at is an old version. Um, this is the history right here. This is saying that this is an old version of what you're looking at. It's a perm permalink. So you can always go back and look at what a Wikipedia page looked like at a previous time. Every Wikipedia editor is pretty much always public. Very rare exceptions where you can't find an old uh, version of a Wikipedia article. So this is the Arlington Hotel, Hot Springs National Park. I mean, that's fine. Everything's fine. And then you see this area down here. It says hauntings. And it's, <laughs> it's a little section on hauntings. And it says the hotel is said to be one of the most haunted buildings in Bath Row, Bathhouse Row. Over the years, the guests. Okay. So it's going on about a suicide, a piano. The lobby's played by itself at midnight. This is all sourced to Citation 8. I could click on that. Or I could just go down here and see citation eight. Is the Arlington Hotel haunted? Okay, the source they're using is called The Haunted Places uh, from 2022. It was it was put in this article in 2022. I'm recording this in 2024. So it's been here for two years. Now, if I click on this, this is what we get. So it is the thehauntedplaces.com. Now, thehauntedplaces.com is not a reliable source. That is like a spam tourist website full of ads. And you can see down here, more ads. Oh, my goodness. And, I mean, there are ads on articles. That's not the problem. It talks about the hotel. and It probably has something to do with the... It's just gossip. It's, it's, it's not... It's not it's not a reliable source. We can't, we can't use this. Um, there's okay. James Sutton wrote it. it there's no journalistic integrity with the haunted places.com. It is a website meant to attract people for clickbait. So what does that mean? What does that mean for this Wikipedia page that has only one citation about hauntings and the hauntings part is that tied to this clickbait, tourism, non-journalistic integrity, uh, non-reliable source article. So either they need a better citation or it needs to go. So what I did is I just made the decision to make it go away. And you hit the edit button and this is an old page. And I came down and I found the haunted section right here. And there's the website right there. And I just removed all of that. It's gone. Gone. And then I left an edit summary saying this can't be, we can't use this in here. It's not a reliable source. And then I hit publish changes. And once I did that, it looks like, it looks like this now. And it's gone. So that's removing something that is not a reliable source. And we see a lot of this happening. Um, it's possible that people are confused and they don't know what a reliable source is, um, or they have an agenda to make as many Wikipedia pages have hauntings on them or something. Very likely what's going on is that the creator of that article knows that Wikipedia gets a lot of views absolutely a massive amount of views. And so having that link on a Wikipedia article means that their, um, their website is going to go up in the rankings, the, you know, the internet rankings, because it's getting clicked on more often and probably brings an income to them. So 
that isn't necessarily the problem that they're making income off of something they wrote because journalism the the problem is is that it's put on the wikipedia page as like a spam or a you know to for advertising's reasons there's there's nothing there to it so it needs to go away and that is a really good example i just found it today of the difference between um something like a the you know a legitimate news source um and some place that is just a website so that's how you do it it takes a minute to clean it out of there and poof, it's gone like a ghost so if this has been interesting to you please uh you know like and share um if you have other questions please you can write to um, us at gsowteam at gmail.com you can leave comments underneath this video if you'd like um, if you have other things that you want to tell us, you know, ask questions about, leave as much detail and links as possible. I want to answer as many questions as I possibly can about editing Wikipedia. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like, please share, please subscribe. Thank you so much.